go live. So here we are one more time, and um, we just, I have to introduce myself. Uh, I am Monica, Monica Stoker from El Blog para Aprender Inglés. And El, El Blog del Inglés, this is the new and the old blog. And uh, also, I have a company called Epi, where you can find, uh, we, we do lessons over Skype. And I am with my good friend, Craig William, that has two websites that are wonderful websites with lots of free resources. So Craig, tell us about your website. Hello, hello everyone. Hello, Monica. Hello, everyone watching. Yeah. Yes, as Monica said, I'm Craig and I work at mansioningles.com, which is a, a website that has free material to improve your English. Go to mansioningles.com and there you will find lots of material, free courses, listenings, lots of things to help you improve your English and a podcast. If you are a podcast listener or you're curious to know what a podcast is and how it can help you improve your English, go to inglespodcast.com, inglespodcast.com and listen. And I hope you like it. So here we have Gemma. There's always our loyal follower. Thank you, Gemma, for coming. Uh, so Hi, Gemma. Uh, uh, she already wrote a message there. And OK, so what's the topic for today? We, we have a very easy topic, I think is easy and, and very nice for your vocabulary. If you want to grow your vocabulary, it's very useful, right? OK. Yes, so, we're going to speak about words with multiple meanings. So there are words in English that are exactly the same. You write them the same, you spell them the same, you say them the same, but they have more than one meaning. So they're called homonyms. They just have multiple meanings, different meanings, and we're going to look at some with you today and see if you know the meanings, and hopefully you'll learn different meanings of words that you already know, but you didn't know you could use them yes. for another meaning. Yeah, there, there is. Um, yeah, this is very useful. I find it very useful because many times when you're reading something, you see the word and you think you know the meaning, and you say, eh? "Doesn't make sense here." So the, this, this is very strange. How? Why do they? Uh, for example, the first word. Let's go with the first word that we have, and and this is for Craig. Okay, what what the, the meaning of this? The, the suddenly you you know that. It's barking is what the sound that a dog makes. And, but then suddenly, what is the meaning with tree? Uh -huh. yeah. Well, yes, you possibly know that bark is the noise that dogs make. Woof, woof. They don't say woof, woof in Spanish, do they? They say no. bow, wow. Bow, wow, wow, wow right? Yeah. <laughs> they, they, they speak a different language in Spanish. Different translation. We translate yeah. it as woof, woof. So yeah. that's bark. That's barking. That's the verb to bark, bark and it's also a noun, a bark. Yeah. But we have skin, don't we? Humans have skin. Well, trees have also some skin on the outside, and that's called bark. So tree bark is the name of the. Would you say corteza in Spanish? The sí. outside. Yes, the corteza the, del. Uh, mm, the the trees have see sí, trees have a corteza that's the name that's the exactly yeah have a corteza and that in English is called bark and that's called like bark. the same as uh, the sound that dogs make so arf arf I thought there was arf arf in American English it was arf arf uh, is, is, that, is that American English arf arf <laughs> Oh, I'm, I conf I'm maybe I'm confused with some other language. No, I like it. I like the fact that American English dogs make a different sound to British <laughs> English dogs. And Spanish dogs, they, they whoa, all speak whoa. differently. Yeah, they, make a, they make the sound, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> this is a different sound. Okay, that's to bark. <laughs> uh, ladrar. In Spanish, is ladrar. Okay. Now, let's go to the second word, multiple meanings. This is interesting because... Coat. The most common meaning of coat is a heavy jacket, un abrigo, no? and that we use for the winter. Everybody knows this meaning. I think everybody knows coat as, but then suddenly you, for example, you buy some paint 
to paint um, to paint a piece of furniture, and it says coat of I don't know coat of you should put two coats. Dos abrigos? No, <laughs> the meaning is capas. The second meaning here is capas. So that's why I said coat of paint, uh, of varnish, or the varnish. No, there's there's also a coat means like a layer, a layer. So you coat it. That's that's what. And ah, the coat also is for animals. They have yes. Uh, dogs have a coat also. And that in Spanish is uh, la piel. I, 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 yeah, piel, yeah, piel. Piel, yeah. I think it's piel, but in English it's coat. Like the Dalmatas, yes. for example, have a very nice coat with these dots. That's a coat, it's a piel. And then we have coat of arms. It's something that Craig loves to have a coat of arms. <laughs> and what is the, what is the, in, in, in Spanish, how do you say coat? Because he just found out. I just uh, learned a new word today yeah. in Spanish. It's blason in blason. Spanish. And I, 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 I don't know, know correct word. me if, if anybody can put on the chat, correct me if I'm wrong, blason, I think is some kind of, um, uh, like the name of the family, the, the name of the family in the Middle Ages. This is something of the, of the Middle Ages where they put the names and what, families that were important, of course, <laughs> uh, of the feudal uh, lords. And, and they used like some kind of sign to say that they belong to a certain family. So mm -hmm. I think that's the blason. But if anybody knows, they can write it on the chat and explain to us what is exactly a coat of, arm, of arms or blason. Because I'm not, I'm not so sure what that is. Okay, uh, eh, Gemma, perhaps you know. You can look at escudo de armas. Yeah, Eduardo, this uh, one. Thank you, Eduardo. Is, escudo de familia, Felipe. Mm. Escudo de familia, and Eduardo says escudo de armas. So ah, okay, not the name, but the 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 weapons. They say armas is the weapons of the family. So, because every family had some kind of symbol that mm -hmm. represented that family name, and that is the escudo de armas, especially for knights, para caballeros, no? For you were a knight when you had a horse, I think, no? Yeah, uh, when you serve when you serve the king or the queen. Yeah, yeah you were. And you were a fighter, a warrior, and so you had mm -hmm. your. The, the 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 coat of arm represented your family your family roots and all that i suppose is that okay yeah. thank you very much eduardo and felipe uh, okay now what do we have the next one okay uh, cross well cross can be a verb and a noun and you probably know especially if you're religious and you go to church then you know that there's a cross in the Catholic religion and Jesus died on the cross. It's also a verb. You can cross the road, cross the street. You can cross from one side to the other side. But there's a meaning in British English that means to be angry. And it's quite common. It's colloquial, but it's very common in British English as an adjective. Why are you cross with me? What did I do wrong? Why are you angry? So if you are cross, you're angry. And there's an expression to cross the line, which is idiomatic. If you cross the line with someone or something, you go too far. You take advantage of someone. You can say you've crossed the line. You've gone too far. Why did you do that? So there's another use of cross. Of course, you can cross. Mm -hmm. It's the same, but it's not with cross. It's pasar la raya or pasar la línea. No, no te pases okay. de la raya. No te pases right. de la línea. So to cross. But I was very surprised with that word when the first time I heard uh, in British English to be cross. <laughs> and I thought, <laughs> what, what is that? To be cross? Yeah. But I to didn't understand angry. the meaning. Yeah. And, and, and then suddenly I realized I just... I, I sort of deducted there was something to do with to be angry, you know, to be 
to be angry, but there's only British because American people don't say that at all. It's not very common. No, it's not very common in American English. They may understand you, but it's it's yeah. definitely common in British English. Uh, so, yes, yeah. and very common, very common. Mm -hmm. the, I, I would say that most people say cross more the word cross than angry, right? Um yeah because it doesn't sound so strong it sounds a bit oh, softer yeah. than angry angry is quite an aggressive word and yeah. cross yeah. means the same but it sounds a bit softer why are you cross with me did i do something wrong why are you angry um mm. so yeah we use that i found one or two other meanings of course you can cross your legs when you sit down you put one leg oh, yeah. over the other one you cross yeah. your legs but that's the verb could, the same as to cross the road, no, no, similar. Yeah. Yeah. And you can cross your eyes if you're cross-eyed. Your eyes look into the uh, center. Well, cross-eyed person. Mm -hmm. uh, cross-eyed. Uh, okay. Uh, no. Gemma says. A ver. A ver. Alejandro says uh, cross the line is similar to the last straw. It's similar, but the last straw. Esta más fuerte. It's the last chance you get. Yeah, you see, you'd say that, you have, to, yeah, you'd you, say that to children. This is the last straw. I'm not going to tell you again. That's it. I've finished yeah. with you. But yeah, if you cross the line, then you go just a little bit too far. Too if you're far. joking yeah, with it's someone. It's the same it's in Spanish. Don't mm -hmm. cross the line. This is exactly the same. I, no pasas uh, la línea. Yeah, o la raya. And, and then Gemma says, molesto. She was referring to cross, to be crossed. Uh, no, it's molesto, no. Stronger. Molesto is... Um, bother. Is bother, yeah, to be bother. I'm not, yeah. I'm bother, no. Um, no, I, it's really to be angry, but not, not as... I don't think we have um, a word like that in, in Spanish that is not enfadado. Uh, there's not an, a specific word that is softer than enfadado. Mm -hmm. um, hmm, irritado, but it's the same. So let's see the following one. We have well. Uh, do you want to add anything to cross? Uh, well, there were one. There's one or two more. There's um. Yeah. It can mean a mixture of something. For example, yeah. if you listen to some music, you can say this music is a cross between hip hop oh. and reggae, yeah. which means a combination of two things. It's a cross between these two styles, which means a, a mixture. And one more use of cross, if you're a perfectionist and you like to do things in a perfect way, you can say it's very important to dot the I's and cross the T's, which means pay attention to every detail. Cross the T's and dot the I's, because you put the dot on oh, the I yes. and you cross the T. Un punto sobre la I y poner la, la raya sobre... Do you say well, the same thing in Spanish? I'm I'm trying to think. Maybe the maybe our loyal followers are going to give a translation for that because I don't have a translation. Did you say something like I crossed see. with him? No. In the meeting Felipe. to no, no. Esto to, no se just dice. to cross, es cruzar, no, not to meet. No. You can you can run across someone, which is a phrasal verb. If you run across someone by accident, ah, yes, you, yes, yes, yes. you yeah. meet them by accident. Um, but um, you wouldn't use it as a as a full principal verb. No. I mean, you can be you can be cross with him. You can be angry with him. But if you meet someone by accident, then you ran into him, or you ran across him, or came across him. So you'd use a phrasal verb. Okay, I have Ruth. She's my student. And she's saying... Hi, Ruth. Uh, Tienes el día... O está revirado. That's a very good translation. But it's only Spanish from Spain, I think. Huh? Not from South America. Está revirado. Okay. Está revirado. Es, 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 uh, eh, yeah. Angry. No? Está un poco revirado. That's true. But it's a uh -huh. very specific word. Huh? It's a very specific word. That is true. Good, Ruth. That's a good um, and molesto, but not very angry. Gemma says, <laughs> yeah, uh, but not so angry. No, not yeah, molesto, but ah, no, but it's still molesto. Still, I, I think it's not molesto in Spanish has nothing to do with being angry. Well, I don't know. I I think 
Ah, oh, then Alejandro, here we have a contribution for your idiomatic expression. Poner los puntos sobre las ies. Ah, it's no. the same in Spanish. No? No, but it, the, here the meaning is different. I, I find that it's different. If there's somebody that, that knows better. Poner los puntos sobre las ies is uh, clarify something. To clarify something. To say like, uh, well, now this is a big debate about this this the problem with the vaccines and if they are going to be uh, uh, sent by the European Union. If it, no, I want poner los puntos of everything. Let me make this clear and yeah, because it's like you finish the letter, you finish doing something. That is the, the expression in Spanish, the meaning of that expression. But in English, is to focus. It means mm -hmm. to focus. No, that's what, I say, what uh, Craig was explaining. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Gemma, she says, I mean to be angry, but not a lot. No. Yeah, that's true. That's that is to be crossed. Mm -hmm. Okay. I another uh, next word. The next word is deal. Deal. It's for you. deal. And this is a deal. Okay, this is collocations. There are many collocations here. Uh, we say a deal, that's a deal. For example, Craig and I, uh, he's trying to sell me his bike, okay? He, he doesn't want it anymore. And, and well, let's suppose you're trying to sell me your bike. And you For say, example. Uh, 100 euros. I said, no, 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 that's too, too, too expensive. And then I offer him 80 euros. And he says, okay, that's a deal. It's a deal. Yeah. It's a deal means trato hecho, okay? And we shake hands. That's the deal, okay? Trato hecho. That's you, have go, you, have to, you have to go the opposite way, Monica. You have to go ah, yeah, this the other. No, no, no this, the other one. Yeah, that's one. it. Ah, that's yeah, it. That one. <laughs> that's a deal. So <laughs> I bought opposite. his bike for 80 euros, <laughs> okay? It's a deal. It's a good deal. It's a good deal. Yeah. It's, it's, a, una ganga. it's a good deal. It's, una, it's a good deal. Yeah, it's a good deal. Uh, pues decir, it's a good, it's una ganga. Then, another meaning, separate meaning. This is an expression also in, in English is, that's a big deal. For example, big deal, something that is very important, something that is not very simple. No, like something, when something is very important and relevant, it's a big deal. For example, uh, for me now to go to Madrid is a big deal to go to Madrid center because I don't live in the center. It's a big deal because, uh, well, there are many things I have to take into account. No, if, well, Madrid is not a good example because we don't have many restrictions. But if you're in Valencia, for example, <laughs> there are more restrictions, and so it's a big deal for you. To, to go from it's one a, place yeah. to the other. Yeah. Not, not so much have, now, but it was a big deal yeah. for me to go and visit my sister because she lived yeah, outside for example, of the city. Yeah. So to see her, it wasn't very far, but it was a big deal because of the restrictions. That's a good example. Uh, this, uh, Alejandro is suggesting another meaning. I have to deal with, deal with, that's another meaning. We didn't, we, we didn't write it down there. Uh, mm -hmm. This is to, to deal with, Something, it means eh, me tengo que eh, enfrentar, ¿no? Enfrentar o, o gestionar una cosa, ¿no? I have to deal with all these things. For example, every month when the, the month ends, I have to deal with lots of paperwork, papeleo. I have to deal, tengo que gestionar, deal with un montón de papeleo, ¿no? Every, every... Every person that has a company, small company, or every person that works in accounting, as an accountant, has to deal with paperwork and taxes. To deal mm -hmm. with, okay? Uh, here we have another example, good, Alejandro, big deal, similar to pacto. Yeah, that was a big deal. Also can be an agreement. So many, and, ah, Leonardo, thank you for this suggestion. Lidiar con. Also, translation to deal with. Tengo que lidiar con papeleos, impuestos, taxes, and all kinds of things. Okay? 
every month. Now, the last, and this is a surprising mini um, deal uh, to deal cards. Okay, when you play cards, you deal them first with the other players. So you distribute them. It's repartir cartas, to distribute. That's to deal cards. And it's a collocation with cards. Uh, Craig, do you play cards? What games? I do you play? used to play cards um, back yeah. in the UK with my friends. I used to play poker for money when I was younger. Oh, yeah. Even poker, yeah. poker is quite difficult. It's it was. A... Uh, it's a poker is a big deal if you're playing for money, and then you deal the cards. Yeah, it's a big deal if you're playing for money. And and, did and you there's ever, another. Did, did you ever lose your your shirt? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. I didn't lose my shirt, but I lost a great deal of money. We can also oh. use deal for. A quantity of something, a yeah. huge deal of money, a great deal of money means a lot of money. So yeah. that's another use of deal for quantity. Yeah. I uh, had a great deal of things to do. Oh, uh, I have, yeah. yeah, for example. That's another, and, and Eduardo says, you can say the opposite. That's not a big deal. That's not a big deal. Of course, you can say the opposite, say, like, it's not important. Oh, uh, yeah. for example, Craig is complaining about having to take the rubbish out every evening and says, why are you deal. complaining? It's not a big deal. You just walk there. It's one, it's one block from your, for, from your house. That's not a big deal. Sometimes no. we make a big deal out of nothing. Okay. Oh, I, I've just thought of There's another meaning. If yeah. there's something that's non-negotiable, in business, it could be a deal breaker. For example, yeah. if you want to buy my bicycle and I have a bell on the bicycle and I say, well, I'm not selling you the bicycle, Monica, because I want to keep the bell. I, I, I can sell you the bicycle, but I want to keep the bell. You could say, no, that's a deal breaker. I yeah, need exactly. the bell. That's so if you're, not, if you're not including the bell, the deal's off. Yeah. Because now, that's a deal now breaker. I'm thinking of the politicians in Spain. Is there are a lot of things that are deal breakers now at the at the yeah. current moment in the Spanish politics. No, that's there are true. many things that are deal breakers. Unfortunately, yeah. now is your turn with the word draft. Draft, yes. Um, well, let's start with the spelling because the spelling we've got there is the American English spelling D R A F T. And you can also spell it a different way, more common in British English. That's D-R-A-U-G-H-T. Now, one meaning of draft is an uncomfortable breeze. Imagine you're sitting at home and it's windy outside and your windows don't close properly. Maybe there's some air, some wind that's coming into the house and you don't like it because you're sitting in a draft. The adjective is drafty. You can have a drafty building, a drafty room where the air's coming in and you feel a bit a bit chilly, a bit cold. So usually older people, grandparents, they don't like sitting in a draft. They like to be warm. So that's one meaning, an uncomfortable breeze. Also, as a verb in the army, you can be drafted to be a soldier. How would you say that in Spanish, Monica? To draft into uh, the army. I was. I had to look it up because I didn't know how to say this in Spanish. It's llamada filas. Yeah, you're. You're. Okay. Well, I am not an expert in this uh, topic, but I think that if there's a war, no, you would be drafted. No. Yes. Well, uh, you can volunteer. That's one way of joining the army. You say, "Okay, yeah. I'm going to the army. It's my yeah. choice. I volunteer voluntarily." Yeah. Or the government can take you. And if the government take you because there's an emergency or a war, then you are drafted into the army. It's a verb and a noun. You can draft people into the army. And the draft is the expression for when people are taken into the army to fight. Another meaning, you can write things. The first time you write something, it's a draft, a first draft. That's your first Borrador, I think you say in Spanish. The first time yeah, you write, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, you can draft a contract. 
Fátima, thank you. Recluta, Eduardo Orsos, thank you. Alistarse in reclutar. Yeah, you, I put llamada a filas, but that's, that's more formal. But okay. alistarse en el ejército, the, to draft. Yes, good. Thank you, Fátima. And thank so you, Eduardo, when, reclutar. When no. you mm -hmm. write a blog post, Monica, how many drafts do you do? Do you just write it once, one draft, or do you repeat it sometimes before you publish? Mm, depends on the type of post. Uh, sometimes, uh, sometimes uh, it can be many, many times. Well, there are, there's not like in the past where you just write one thing on paper and then you you correct it. Now you can just start correcting on. I'm start yeah. reading it and I still have to change some things. A couple of drafts usually. If depends on the type of post also because if, for example, the post I make after we finish this, I will make a post. There is normally just the list of words, so it doesn't, it's only one draft, no more. Yeah. And Eduardo says also the NBA draft. That's right. It's the same meaning yeah. as the army when they yeah. take potential players, like really good college uh, basketball yeah. players, and they bring them into the professional leagues. Yeah. It's the same idea as the army. They're pulling you in to play, so they're drafting people into the teams. There are one or two other meanings that we don't have on the screen. There's the game drafts, which in Spanish is damas. And yes. in American English, they say checkers, to play checkers, checkers, to play drafts. In British English, it's drafts. And also very common when you're drinking beer, because if you drink draft beer, using draft as an adjective, that means beer from the barrel, or you could mm. say from the tap. So you can have bottled beer and draft beer. Guinness on draft is Guinness from the barrel, for example. Okay. And uh, next one. This one is for me. Jam. <laughs> the first thing I'm going to say that the word jam doesn't mean jamón. Please. Nope. Everybody makes this mistake. I just ate some Spanish jam. No, come on. That's marmalade. Like it's a that is made from fruit. So it's a kind of a uh, confiture, like this French say. So jam is made from fruits. It's not made from pigs. <laughs> so that's why that is a very common mistake. So please pay attention to that word. Jam does not mean jamón. How do you say jamón? Ham with an H, very soft. That's like he's saying it. Ham. Do not use your throat to pronounce this sound. You say, like you were a little bit tired and you go after you run. No? You said you go. Or that's cleaning your glasses. Ham, or cleaning your glasses. But in this ham. case, the sound is jam. No? It's a strong sound. So, and it means um what you put in your bread fruit that you put in your bread and it come it comes usually in a how do you say that i forgot not a jar a, a jam, in a jar, a jam in a jar. jar another jam jam yes jar both jam bote. jar yes uh, then you have traffic jam traffic jam okay traffic jam if you have a traffic jam is because there are many cars in the morning going or in the evening going to the same place at the same time. And there is a traffic story. Um, and, and, and Madrid is very, very common to, for example, you oversleep and you say, sorry, there was a horrible traffic jam. And most people think, well, and it's, it's very difficult to know because it's true, Madrid is, Full of traffic is it common jams. in Madrid? Yeah, lots of well, traffic Well, with the jams. COVID, it's a different situation because many, many people are remote working. But yeah. pre-COVID situation, it was very common to be in a traffic jam all the time because Madrid is completely full of cars. So there's a traffic jam. I cannot get there because this is horrible. There was an accident. So there is a traffic jam. And this word brings me to another uh, idea, and it's a bad situation. So... Uh, I remember, like, how can I say this? Because I remember also the, in the in the photocopy machine, it says mm -hmm. paper jam. When when the paper gets stuck, when the paper gets stuck, 
sometimes you can read uh, it says this paper jam so paper atascado so if, when you're in a bad situation it's the same meaning no it's not because yeah. somebody's put jam in the photocopier no, no. there's no, no, no. Jam, there are no jam sandwiches in the photocopier no, and yeah. nobody has tried to copy a jam sandwich it's no. because it's stuck yeah, yeah, it's stuck. yeah. the paper's it's stuck it's, it's and jammed and the, jam. the copier's yeah, it's jammed like it's one thing over the other so it's it's jam uh, in spanish we say atascado no we we, yeah. we 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 we're jam. It's a bad situation because we're as Felipe okay. So says, Felipe says, uh, okay, Gemma, Eduardo. Is, is there any? Um, Eduardo is asking. Is there any other word for traffic jam? Well, there's the a collocation. There's a collocation uh, with traffic that's heavy. We we talk about oh, heavy, heavy traffic or traffic, but maybe yeah. the traffic is moving, but it's not stuck. It's not jammed it's not hasn't stopped traffic jams usually mean there's no movement and heavy traffic means there's a lot of yeah, traffic many dense. cars and it's going very very slowly you can also say dense traffic or yeah that's more formal it sounds more formal traffic yeah, is, I, think heavy, not, I think heavy heavy is more common heavy traffic yeah but the, there's not there's a, there's a difference because like you said traffic jam is like you you just atasco un atasco you cannot go but so for yeah. a Pasco, what he's asking, mm -hmm. I think there's only traffic jam. Mm -hmm. Traffic is heavy, the traffic is dense. I don't know if any other words that means the same in English. You can use jam as, an, as a verb. If you jam something into something, you push it very hard, sobrecargar. Yeah. So if you have a suitcase and you have too many clothes and you try to jam your clothes into the bag or into the suitcase, you're pushing too many things in a small yeah, space. Jam, es jam como, it inside. Yes, eh, forzar. Forzar. Meter a la fuerza algo. To jam. So, and Gemma is talking about the, 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 the Madrid is very difficult to park your car. Yes. It is now, it's going to become more and more difficult because then you have the problem of the type, the different signs that cars have according to the a uh, amount of pollution they they produce the cars and now yeah. certain cars you cannot go the old cars you cannot go to madrid anymore because really? you will you will have uh yeah it's it's, it's a they're slowly gradually it's, they're going to have more stricter rules so for yeah. example you can go but you have to park in a parking garage but you cannot park uh, in the street that's not possible for for example with my car they they will put you a fine. So exactly he says. Okay, let's let's see another. We were jam. Okay, I think we we finished with these meanings, and let's go to mind. Mind another word with multiple meanings. Mind. Well, it's a synonym of your brain. What's inside your head? Tu mente is your mind. The mind is a wonderful thing. So there, it's a noun. And it means what's what's what you think with, what's inside your head, so mente. And, of course, you can also have the expression, I don't mind, no me importa. And sometimes there's confusion between I don't mind and I don't care. They're quite similar, no me importa, but I don't care is often used when you're a little bit cross, irritated. What do you want for dinner? Oh, I don't care. Can I turn over the channel and watch the TV on the other channel? Oh, I don't care. I don't mind is really, it, it doesn't matter to me. I really have no opinion one way or the other. So I don't mind is, is un poco más suave. And I, I don't think, care I think can be a little more aggressive. I think it's the different kind of question also. For example, do you mind if I smoke? No, uh, I don't mind. For that's example. asking for permission yeah, yeah yeah asking for permission and so no i don't mind really but if you say i don't care it's like i don't give a damn i mean it's like like no, but, if, but that's a good but that's a good example if you're in a yeah. in a outside let's say now we're we're yeah. under restrictions so we're in a terrace outside and there's a person on the next table maybe the smoke bothers you maybe you don't like someone but legally they can maybe smoke outside so if if you're a smoker and you say do you mind if I smoke? I could say, oh, I don't care. 
And if I say it like that, then <laughs> it's me that. importa, pero haces yeah. lo que quieres. Yeah, so exactly. it depends It depends on your intonation yeah. also. Yeah. But I don't mind is is a little softer. So, yeah, I don't oh, mind. Yeah. So, I, no, I don't mind. It's neutral. I would say neutral. Yeah, exactly. It's completely neutral. And, my and name, um, I remember this in the tube. In it, in, many people remember this. Yeah, it means cuidado, be careful. So mind yeah. the gap means be careful of the space in London in the train between the train and the how do you say and then in English? The I platform. I, the platform. platform. The gap. You can say mind the steps or mind the floor because the floor's wet, mind it's slippery, the... don't fall over. So that use of mind just means be careful be careful and, and don't fall down or don't have an accident. And one more, going back to mind as mente, of course, you can lose your mind when you go crazy. If you uh -huh. lose your mind, you'll you go mad, you go crazy. And if your children are really bothering you, you can say, stop doing that because I'm losing my mind with you kids. For example. <laughs> yeah. For example. Uh, I don't know if there are any comments. No, the, on this now we have here we nail. Like nail. I like these expressions. Okay, nail is uña, like fingernail, right? Nail. But also, it's funny because nail also in, in English is clavo. So that's why we have the hammer, martillo, and clavo as the type of, of and then. So you can say, I need some nails, and that doesn't mean fingernails. It means I need some nails to make this table, for example, because I'm going to hammer there with the nail. And from this idea, because this is, a, 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 I think this is the idea that brought the expression, that created the expression, I've nailed it, you know, to nail something. And it means, in Spanish, it's very, Funny because uh, in Spanish we say similar expression. You've nailed it. Has dado en el lo has hecho perfecto. Has dado en el clavo. You've nailed it. And I, oh, I nail it. Past tense. And it's funny because I remember I saw this on, on one social network that's Pinterest. They uh -huh. show there was a guy showing these uh, cupcakes made with uh, the tray to make cupcakes but upside down not not in the to put it the upside down so there was a person showing this tray and then showing very nice cupcakes that came perfectly well using the using this tray for making them on the upside down it was very strange and so the guy tried this thing to do the thing and he put Comment, I've nailed it and as, a, as a joke. Acertado. Eh, sí, lo he dado en el clavo. And all the cakes, the cupcakes were just uh, spread all over the, the train and it was just terrible. It was just like, a, <laughs> it was like dough that it was just going running around, but it was a joke. I've nailed it, or I can say to you've nailed it. And this Facebook Live, you nailed it. Because you did everything, has acertado, has dado en el clavo. You you said everything precisely, no? So, so these guy, this guy's cupcakes were they coated with chocolate? Yes. Aha. Uh -huh. yes. Coated with chocolate. Did you see what coated I did there? Coated with chocolate. They were sí. Tenían coated. una capa de, de de chocolate. As if I remember right, I think they were. And and it was very funny because it's a very good way to learn this expression because he was saying in an ironic way, I've nailed it. Actually, it was a disaster. Yeah. Say, <laughs> he, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't nail it, it at all. No, it didn't work. <laughs> no, no, lo hice. The many things happen. Sometimes it happened to me, you know, you copy a recipe and, and yeah. then you go and you make the recipe and it's a disaster. It's not. But I like okay. it when people post photos like that because the internet and Instagram is full of perfect lives and perfect oh, yeah. cupcakes and perfect oh, days. Yeah. Exactly. And when somebody really messes up and they don't yeah, nail it, it's up. really nice yeah. to see the disaster. I like it. I one thing it before nice. before we move on, one word that I or two words that I often confuse in Spanish is the difference between tornillo and clavo. Yeah. So yeah. Monica yeah. said that nail is clavo. clavo 
Torneo is screw. C R E. C R E. Sorry. S C R E W. Screw. Torneo. Be careful of the difference. That's important. Screw and nail. And nail. Yeah. And Eduardo says, talking about the previous uh, word. Mind. mind your business mind your business is negative that that is very negative like they say come on uh, uh, craig starts starts asking me about things i don't want to talk about how much how much money do you earn monica yeah mind your business <laughs> that's <laughs> very often used with own isn't it mind you mind your own business yeah mind, mind your, your own, own business, business. I mean uh, no te metas en lo que no te importa Something mind like your own that. business. Mind your business. So mind your things. And then he says uh, nuts and bolts. The nuts and bolts is, a, is, is an expression in English. So it's to know everything about something. No? Craig knows yeah. the nuts and, and bolts of the English grammar, for example. But, all, uh, but also I think Eduardo's comparing nuts and bolts with screws and nails because yeah, but the nut nuts is... is Tuerca, a ver. Tuerca, that's it. Tuerca, yes. yeah. And, and, and let me see. Bolts. Es que bolts, I don't know. Tornillo, Maybe. perno, perrojo. Es que it's for locking a door. Hmm. Es un pestillo. Hmm. No, okay. that's not that's not what Eduardo means. A torni um Well, let's put nuts and bolts in word reference. Yeah, We're using yeah. word reference. No, but nuts and bolts com. is a is a figurative expression. Nuts and bolts. How uh, do you translate it into Spanish? Uh, tuercas, tuercas, sí, tuercas y tornillos. Y tornillos pero eso no significa eso. Los 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 intríngulis del negocio. The nuts and bolts, like when you know everything, no? Eduardo says, "I nailed it." Thank you, Eduardo. <laughs> yeah, you nailed it. Yeah. Tuercos y tornillos. Tuercas yeah, y, y tornillos. tornillos. Tuercas y tornillos. The nuts are tuercas y bolts are tornillos. Still, okay. Tuercas. Monica knows the nuts and bolts of the English language. No, you know the nuts and bolts of the English. El intríngulis, todo, all the. Okay, so let me see next one. And now, what? What's the next word? The next one is for you, no? Pool. Pool. Yeah, most of you know swimming pool. Uh, if you go swimming, you go swimming in a swimming pool. But do you know the word carpool? That's a group of cars together that is quite common in big companies. If you work for a big company, then they probably have company cars. And sometimes you can have an individual car that's your company car and you don't share it. But very often with a company, they have a group of cars that people can use, and that's called a carpool. And there's another use. If you go to work and you're a commuter, so you travel from outside the city into the city to work, you can join a carpool, which means you share the car to travel together. So you invite people into your car and you drive to the same place together. So there's another expression to pull your resources, which means to bring your resources together, tus recursos, so that everybody's working in a common way. Maybe one person's good at drawing, another person's good at uh, speaking, another person's good at mathematics. And if you come together and you use your talents in a common way, you're pooling your resources. That's the verb. As uh, a noun, I think it's charco in Spanish, a pool of water. Charco. Mm. Yeah, charco. Oh, so a pool of, of water. And of course, you can also have a pool of blood. Mm. If someone's murdered or killed, they could mm. be on the floor lying in a pool of blood, for example. That's another use of pool. Hey. And it's also it's also a game. We didn't write that either. It's ah, a game. Pool is a game. American yeah. pool. A pool, and yeah, there are game there's of pool. There's a different kind of pool. I don't remember the different snookers. Snook. There's. I don't know too well because I'm not doing snookers. Oh, I can tell you quick. I can tell you quickly. Uh, snooker um, is more common in the UK, and that's played yeah. on a very very big table. Yeah, that I with, always with with sticks called cues and and balls and American pool that they have bigger balls, 
because they're American, haha, and with numbers with numbers on them, and the table's much mm. smaller. So American Paul on a smaller table, and snooker played on a bigger table. That's basically the difference. And the rules are very different, but it doesn't matter. Yeah. Different games. Thank you for the explanation. And I want to say, Christine, thank you for coming. She says, I'm a bit late. <laughs> yeah, but we still have some, <laughs> some time for, because uh, we still have some words. And Felipe says, Posta, we don't mind. Calco. And Eduardo said, a pool is a word related to the game of billiard. Yeah, pool. Yeah, billiards played on a small table. It's played on mm. a table same size um, as pool. But it has different rules, so it's only three balls in billiards. Mm -hmm. Okay, next one is so. This is for me. So is the past tense of see. See, so, seen. I saw, for example, I saw a man walking down the street, or I saw a dog <laughs> with his owner uh, going for a walk, or I saw a nice car. Mm -hmm. No, I see, so, see, so, seen. But so is also to cut wood. And that is, a, that, that is a very interesting word because ah, if you don't know that the meaning is to cut wood, you might be confused thinking as the past tense of C. Because the mm -hmm. most common, of course, the most common word is the past tense of C. And you say, so I'm going to sew some... Um, the, so this piece of wood and I'm going to make a chair, for example. I, I don't know. Do you know how to sew? Um, no. No. no I, never when I was sewing. very young, I used yeah. to help my dad and we had uh, classes in school, woodwork classes, but I was never very good at sawing wood. But you were, so, you, you did it. Yeah, so I you, did it. Yeah, yeah, I did it. Yeah. But I, I, remember I, I, also, I also did cooking at school, so... Uh, <laughs> And you never decide, well, it, it depends how much you practice, but what I know is, I think one time, so is also la sierra, no? It's also the the tool that you use to cut the the, the wood. Yeah, but it's I the remember one, somebody, I don't remember where, but I've seen somebody doing it, a, a guy doing it, and I tried, and I didn't even, ah, I know. I wanted to sow some, some trees that I have in the garden because they were dead. And nobody mm. wanted to help me. My guys didn't want to do it. And I said, I'm going to do it. And I go with this saw. And I was like, wow, this is very <laughs> difficult. It's very difficult to sew because you need a lot of uh, strength, basically. Yeah, you do, okay, especially Sierra. if it was hard. Yes, Sierra. Um, Felipe is asking if saw could be also a uh, refrain. I haven't huh? heard that use, no. Felipe. No, I don't neither. think so. I could be wrong. And then Eduardo so. says to play at the seesaw. Uh, On the seesaw. Uh, it will be S double E, I think, the spelling of seesaw. And that's for children where you have something like this that goes ah, up and down. Yeah, yeah. yeah, this, yeah this, I didn't so get it. I didn't get it what he meant. On the seesaw is un balancino. So that one yeah. one child yeah. is here, one child is there, and it yeah. goes up and down like that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know in Spanish, but but I I don't know because it's such a long time I haven't done that. <laughs> but oh, I I was on the seesaw yesterday. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah? No. Seesaw, sí, all together, the, sí, como seesaw, barra con asientos en los extremos que sube y baja, balancín. But I don't know if you call it that way. Seesaw, but yeah. The, the preposition yes, it is. would be to play on yeah. the seesaw, not at. Yeah, but so you can play at you the sea, but on the seesaw. Were you on a seesaw yesterday? Come on. No, I was, I was joking. Yeah, okay, do, you, yeah. do you think I was on a seesaw, Monica? No. At my, at my age? No. No, I wouldn't mind. If I was, mind, if I was on a seesaw, if I was on a seesaw with a child sitting on the other yeah. end of the seesaw, and I sat on one end, the child would go flying in the air. Yes, and I remember my, I think it was my brother that did that to me. He was heavier than I was, and he exactly. just had me on top for many, for a long time, at least, well, some minutes. And I was, yeah, let me down. <laughs> I was just pushing. Huh? <laughs> sí, so, el balancín. Eh, subi baja, a call in Spanish. Subi baja, ¿no? Es que subi no baja. Sé cómo, subi baja. Tiene sentido. Okay. okay. <coughs> okay. 
Uh, we call it, so we call it sub y baja. Okay, sub y baja, like this, sub y baja. Okay, uh, next one. Yes. For you. This is easy. Season. It's easy and it's quick. You probably know the use of season, the four seasons of the year. Say them with me. Summer, autumn, or fall in American English, winter, and spring. So the only difference in American English is fall. That's easy to remember because the leaves fall from the trees in the autumn is British English. But maybe you don't know that season is also used as a verb and a noun to give food flavor. So can you season the salad means put oil and pepper and salt and other condiments and spices onto the food. You can also use the gerund. That's very common seasoning. So you can say that it needs more seasoning. It needs more flavor, more spices, more salt, more pepper. The paella lacks seasoning. It doesn't have a lot of taste, mm -hmm. for example. Uh, that means condimentar. Okay, I think everybody understood because the explanation was crystal clear. Crystal for clear, thank you. Yeah, sign. Uh, let's go a little bit a little bit faster, I think. We, well, we don't have too many. Three more to go, and that's it. Yep. Sign. Okay, two meanings. Sign. You sign. This is the, from the word signature. The noun is signature. That means firma, and to sign your paper. You need to sign, for example. Uh, nowadays, it's less and less comic, be, common because of electronic uh, digital signature. signatures. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but uh, in the past... <laughs> You have to sign contacts, you have to sign when you get married, you have to sign um, any kind of document that is official. You need, they need your signature in this, it's a signal to, that you accept something, no? Firmar. And then we have a sign, you can see signs. When you drive, you can see signs that indicate you north, south, the next city, city center, the all kinds of signs when you're driving on the road, you can see many signs. And that means uh, in Spanish, señales, no? Son señales. There are many signs. Well, and also can be other kind of signs, not necessarily for the road, no? So, uh, I, I think you can put a sign anywhere, no? And, and as a private person, not, not, not only for the highway or, the, or any route, uh, you can just put a sign there, for sale, for example. My house is for sale. That's a sign, no? Eso también es un letrero, un letrero. Okay, yep. and I don't know if there's any other meaning. I the think the sign, sign language. Ah, the sign language, yes. Okay. Uh, a ver. Ah, let me see. Eduardo is asking some question. Um, a lot of injuries, she says, a lot of injuries playing on the seesaw. And then she yeah. says, eh, when you name the four seasons, which one do you, do you start with? I never thought about this. Um, I always start with winter because that's my favorite season. I love winter. So also the song by Carol okay. King, Winter, not, Spring, Summer yeah, and Fall. Uh, Yes, when, that, but, that's because this, that, but this is only because of the song. I don't think there's really an order. It's not uh, order. Neither, no. neither there's no, there's no special it's order, Eduardo. Order. Whatever. I would start with your favorite season. What's your favorite season? Start with that one. Look, Craig, do you have two seasons? <laughs> <laughs> How did you know that the only thing I can cook is a shepherd's pie? Jose yeah. How did you know that? That's the only yes. thing because I know. You I told before. us, you told us one one Facebook. Uh, I, okay. I remember you said the only <laughs> thing that I know how to cook is the shepherd's it's pie. It's true, uh, and, uh, but I cook it. But I cook it well. I very cook it well. well. Yes. Okay. Only one thing that I yeah. cook well. Typical, typical British uh, food. The shepherd's pie. I do, pie. I do, anyway. I do season it. I do season it with some mm -hmm. salt, some pepper, some Worcester sauce. And some other secret secret ingredients. Oh, okay. Uh, I suppose people, at least in, in Spain, they want to go to have dinner. So we hurry up. Tip, this okay. is for you. Tip, top, money, advice. 
to tip. Yes, you tip money. Dar una propina. Um, mm -hmm. It's a verb and a noun. So you tip the waiter or the waitress or you give the waiter a tip. Propina. Um, it can also be a piece of advice. If you give someone a tip, you can give them some advice. For example, I'll give you a tip on how to remember English. Go and read Monica's blog. That's a good <laughs> tip. That's a good piece of advice. Yeah. And if you give someone a tip, you can tip them off. So there's a phrasal verb with tip. To tip them off is to give them um, some good advice or push them in the right direction. I'll tip you off about the horse that's going to win the race. And you can bet money and win the race. So, so you plan. help them by tipping them plan. off. Yeah, the meaning of that in Spanish is soplar. No? Of, okay. Other meanings, there's the tip of the pen, which is the top of the pen or the tip of the mountain. And finally, a rubbish tip is a very British English use of the word. And the rubbish tip is where you take your rubbish, your basura, and oh. you tip it because tip also means echar, to mm -hmm. tip. So you throw away your rubbish at a rubbish tip. Yeah, but that's British, I think. It's British. That's British English. Americans mm. would say something else. I don't know what Americans mm. would say, but they wouldn't say rubbish. They would say garbage mm. or trash. Yeah, we say garbage, yeah. Okay, let's go for... Uh, let me see. Uh, uh, to tip your head. Uh, well, uh, mm. Or tip I your hat. Good morning. Head. Tip ah. your hat. Uh, Jose Ignacio says... I have listened to all your cuadernos mensores to practice my English. So <laughs> that's why he knows that you only know how to cook. Uh, Thank you, and, Jose Ignacio. And, and then Eduardo says that in Spanish, we start with the spring. I, really, I've been speaking Spanish all my life, and the first time I hear this, maybe I don't know it. Okay. So, uh, ah, and also to Christine, yes. thank you to have thank it you, on Christine. the tip of your tongue and la punta on, de la lengua. It's yeah? on the tip of my tongue. This is when you cannot remember, no? You, ah, yeah. I know this, but I don't remember her name. I know who I'm, we're talking about, but I cannot remember. That's to have something, a name on the tip, on the tip of, of your my tongue. tongue. Okay, let's go for a wave. Okay, I don't want to... Okay, wave here. We have to wave is to say hello, it's waving. So, how uh, saludar, to wave. Oh, she's waving at me. Hey, hello, I'm here. Sometimes people hello. are waving at you and you may, like you didn't see them. Uh, yeah, I, I, didn't, I haven't seen you. I haven't seen them. Oh, hello, I'm here. Okay. Wave is also hola. Everybody knows this. And waves now with the virus we are talking about waves because there's we're in the third we're in the third wave, wave are we wave, or fourth yeah, and, i don't i don't know and this sense is similar to the sea because it's ups and down what what they mean with waves is that it goes up and down and up and oh, no this this all the time coming and going and it's different waves and the spanish is exactly the same it's hola so but the difference here is in wave, but probably you, mo most people or many people wouldn't know this meaning of saludar, to wave at, at someone, no? waving at him, and he's not paying attention. Okay, and the last one for you, Craig. Watch. Um, mm. We don't use them very often these days, but if you can remember years and years and years ago before mobile phones, we used to have wrist watches, watches here on your wrist to tell the time. Now, the clock is on the wall, so a clock is on the wall or it's smaller, but the watch is on your wrist. This is your wrist here. So a wrist watch is worn on your wrist. And as a verb, it's to watch something, means to look at something or to see something. The difference is when you watch something, there's a lot more engagement. You're more involved in what you're seeing. And that's why we say watch television, but see something in the streets. So you can see something by accident, but when you're watching it, you're involved in what's happening. You're watching a game of football or a game of tennis, for example. And also another meaning, it can mean turno or shift, especially if you're in law enforcement, if you're a policeman or a detective, 
you might say something like, oh, there were no problems, there were no criminals on my watch. So you'd use that as a noun to say, when I was working, nothing bad happened. No problems on my watch. That's very common in, in movies, especially American movies. Um, and that's it, I think. Yeah, that's Unless it. You can that's, that think of another meaning for watch. Any yeah, more meanings for watch? Exactly on time. It's exactly one hour. Uh, but we want we have to say goodbye. Thank you very much for coming. We really appreciate that you're here every week. Well, I am every 15 days, a fortnight. <laughs> and, and Craig is every week in, in La Mansión del Inglés. And well, uh, don't forget to visit the blog para aprender inglés. And and of course, La Mansión del Inglés, an English podcast. And well, I don't know, Craig, do you want to do, do you want to add anything else? Only one thing. If you found this interesting and you're interested to learn more about homonyms, multiple meaning words, we did a podcast about this a few months ago. It was episode 237. So if you want to learn some more of these homonyms, go to inglespodcast.com slash 237. And thank okay. you very much for spending thank time you. with us. It's been a lot of fun. Okay. We'll see you next week. See you next uh, 15 days. Bye-bye. Take care. Stay safe. Bye-bye. Thank you.